Before we get started, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so that you don't miss any of the content that is released by Go Collect. And if you're interested, head over to Reggie Collects here on YouTube. Reggie here, your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder and comic book collector and the host of the Go Collect Speculation video, and I want to welcome you to another episode. In this episode, we are going to take some time to talk about five fantastic blog posts that have been sent in to Go Collect. And I will tell you that these blog posts cover a wide range of topics from Golden Age Batman to Golden Age Superman to Bronze Age Era variants to NFTs and some other things as well. With that said, let's get to the blog post. This very first blog post declares that Batman 22 is the king of the hill when it comes to Golden Age comics. For those that are not familiar with this specific book, let me tell you that it was published at the tail end of World War II, specifically on May 10th, 1944. And what makes this book special is that it is the first solo story featuring Alfred. And by and large, this book could be considered to be on fire, at least for a Golden Age book. And I say that because Golden Age books don't necessarily move in the same way that modern books or even Bronze Age books for that matter move based upon movies and also TV shows. But this book still is performing incredibly well. Alfred is an incredibly popular character. He plays a, an important role in Batman's history and lineage and all of that good stuff. And this is also just a really cool book to have. Our blogger does a really solid job of digging into some of the data associated with Batman 22. And he looks at several different grades of this book and analyzes the respective returns at those grades. The very first grade that he looked at for Batman 22 was a 9.2. The last sale for this book was $2,200. In fact, there have been two sales of this book with a total of three on the CGC census. This book has a return of 36.2%. When you drop down to a 5.0, this book has a selling price of roughly $500. There are five recent sales and there are a total of 16 on the CGC census with a positive return of 29.4%. The most interesting is the 2.0, a CGC 2.0, which last sold for $305. There are seven sales recently, a total of nine on the CGC census, and this book has a positive return of 51.4%. That is an incredible return for this book. And I don't have it in my collection, but this is a book that I would not mind having in my collection. The blogger actually goes on to provide some additional texture and context to these data by saying it is important to have a long-term horizon for Golden Age books because they move at a different rhythm. His, his cautionary note is that you want to look at these books in terms of how they're going to perform over 20 years, not necessarily from month to month or year to year like you might with a modern age book. Part of the reason why he says this is while there are a lot of positive returns associated with Batman 22, there are some negatives as well. Specifically, when you look at the graded 8.0 and also 4.0, there seems to be a negative return of 15% and 18% respectively. It is undeniable that Alfred plays an important role in Batman's history and will probably play an important role moving forward, despite the fact that he was actually killed by Bane in 2019. So time will tell what happens with this book and a lot of what will determine it is what happens with the character moving forward. So I will tell you that I have spent a considerable amount of time over the last few weeks trying to better understand NFTs. And an NFT is a non-fungible token. And the best way to think about an NFT is that it is a way for people to have physical ownership over a digital asset. That's probably the best way to think about it. 
And if you if you really drill it down, if you are buying original art, for example, you have a hard copy of that original art in your possession. You have ownership with something that is created digitally. So in a cover, for example, that is created digitally, you don't necessarily have a physical copy, but an NFT is a way to give you that ownership. And if you have ownership, then you also have the ability to buy, sell, and trade that asset. In this blog post, Patrick does a fantastic job of exploring what NFTs are, as well as putting out some cautionary notes for what the industry might want to do to ensure that NFTs have some credibility and legitimacy moving forward. If you are interested in NFTs in any way, shape, or form, I encourage you to read Patrick's blog post. It is linked down in the description. But don't just stop there. Read that blog post, but there's another that he wrote previously where he provides additional guidance. Read that one and then try to read some other information out there because this is not necessarily an easy topic to understand. So the more that you read, I think the more you will understand the nuances and potentially where the industry may head into the future, at least as it relates to original art. As I mentioned, this blog post is linked down in the description. On its surface, this next blog post is all about a guy named Nick. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know who Nick is, but after reading this post, Nick looks a lot like me. And what I mean by that is Nick is a YouTuber, but he is also a fan of superheroes. And essentially what has happened is that Nick has characters that he's interested in in the present day, and he's traced these characters back over time to the golden age to see how these characters have changed over the decades. And we're talking about characters like Wonder Woman and Batman and Superman and also even the Blue Beetle. Nick says not to read the Blue Beetle, just FYI on that one. But he has these characters that he's interested in. He's followed them back over time to see how these characters have changed over the decades. And I'll be completely honest with you. I've done something similar, specifically with Spider-Man, my favorite character. I have read different story arcs throughout time featuring Spider-Man and Peter Parker. And I've looked at and examined how the character has changed over time to remain relevant over the decades. And again, this is essentially what Nick is doing with some of the characters that I just mentioned before. And this is why Nick is me. Nick might also be you. This is honestly a fun blog post to read because the blogger is essentially saying that there are some really awesome golden age characters that are out there now that are still relevant in the present day, but have their roots in the golden age. And these books might represent great buying opportunities for several different reasons, because these books don't necessarily move at the same rhythm as a modern book might based upon movies and TV shows. So these books represent really great opportunities to pick them up and to watch them grow over time. If you're interested in golden age books, this is a blog post you want to check out. Even though it's kind of sort of about Nick, but not really about Nick, this one is linked in the description. Error variants are all the rage with a lot of people. And I'll be completely honest, I don't see the fascination, but that is okay because there are a lot of people that absolutely love these error variants. And we are talking about all types of error variants and they come in all different shapes, sizes, and forms from black and white to colors being missing to covers being reversed or upside down. If you name it, there is probably an error of some type out there that will fit your fancy. Our blogger in this post talks about a specific error variant from the Bronze Age. And we are talking about Marvel Spotlight issue number one. And with this book, it is actually missing the issue number in the left hand corner. I've never seen this book out there, but supposedly there are a healthy number of them out there. Maybe you actually have one in your collection. But the blogger actually does a little bit of an analysis here, comparing this error variant to a pricing variant that exists for Captain America. This is a blog post, again, that you might want to check out if you're into error variants. But what was interesting with this book 
is that at a CGC 9.8, the last sale of this book was $599. There are actually four copies of this on the CGC census, and this book has a positive return of 26.1%. Back in 2019, this book was selling for $346, which represents a pretty nice return. If you are into error variants, this is a blog post that you want to check out because there's also, as I mentioned, a comparison to another price variant that is very interesting. This one is linked down in the description. With everything that is happening in the comic book market, it is harder and harder to find really great deals. Yet, that is potentially what our next blogger has done. The blogger has identified several undervalued Silver Age books that you may want to check out. And there is potential with each one of these books. And, and what I like that the blogger did is the blogger highlights the book as well as the rationale to support why they are suggesting that you actually pick it up. I'm not going to talk about every single one of the books that the blogger mentions, but I will highlight a few. The very first book features a character that actually had his origins in the Golden Age, but the version that most people are familiar with appeared in Justice League of America issue number 64, and we are specifically talking about the Red Tornado. The blogger highlights that this character has appeared in cartoons for years and recently made a few appearances in the Arrowverse. The blogger goes on to highlight the reason that this book is undervalued probably is because of where it actually appears. But if you believe that there's some magic to be made with the Red Tornado moving forward, this is definitely a book that you want to check out. The next book that the blogger highlights is House of Mystery issue number 143. This book has significance for a few different reasons, but the most important might be that this represents the line in the sand in which DC made a pivot from horror to hero comics. This book, in fact, represents the first solo story of Martian Manhunter. Martian Manhunter has appeared in numerous television shows and also cartoons, but for some reason or another, this book continues to have a low FNV, but this could be where the magic gets made. There is one other book that is referenced in this blog post that we are not going to talk about because I want to encourage you to check this one out for yourself. So there you have it. We have reached the end of another episode. If you enjoyed this week's recap, I definitely want to encourage you to hit the thumbs up button and I want to encourage you to tune in next week when we get to do this all over again.